everybody, and welcome again to another edition of my shows, where in this segment, I will be showcasing some interesting elements of Miami. And today, we're going to be speaking about the historic Miami. There are five places I've selected which showcase the beautiful splendor of examples of this type of Italian architecture or what they would call the Mediterranean Revival style. So there are many places here and attractions that you can find where you'll be able to experience some of the splendor of these beautiful European styles, let's say. Um, so Vizcaya Museum and Gardens is one of my favorite places. It definitely needs to be on the to-go-see list if you are here visiting Miami. Uh, it was built in the 20th century and it was originally uh, a fabulous villa. It's actually part of the National Historic Landmark program um, and it was designed to resemble a typical Italian villa. It had the dairy house, the poultry house, the greenhouse, staff residences, the mule stables and such. And here is the beautiful website so you all can look. It's Vizcaya.org and as you see it's very palatial. It's right against the water there in uh, Coconut Grove slash Coral Gables in that area right on Bayshore Drive. People have weddings there. I've been to weddings there. I've been to film shoots there. The garden is stunning as you can see from all of the images. They have uh, collectibles inside, a beautiful store. If you've been to some of these stunning castles and villas in Europe, you're going to feel right at home at Vizcaya. And if you have some large affair that you're trying to plan, a big wedding or some sort of corporate event, you can also rent it out. Uh, it's a museum at all other times and at different times of the year they'll have different events. Like over Christmas they just had a big film event where everything's decorated with all the beautiful Christmas decor. Uh, it was already too full so I couldn't make it in. Um, over Halloween they have a beautiful sort of Venetian uh, costumed theme festival many times and I've been to that over the years so I would definitely suggest checking Vizcaya out. Um, the Biltmore Hotel is close to that area. The Biltmore Hotel has a beautiful golf course and it also is one of these stunning properties that as you can see here let's just play a video it's a AAA Ford Diamond awarded property and Look at how splendorous it is. Many weddings have been done there as well, as well as many uh, corporate events. I just went for the mayor's ball over Christmas and it was amazing. So let's take a peek here. I love all of the vaulted the vaulted ceilings there. They have all sorts of activities at the spa. Um, they have one of the largest pools and this is where people dine. You can have a brunch there, beautiful delicious breakfast or dinner as well. Um, really all the events have been so special. Look at the size of that pool. It is one of the largest I believe in Florida and uh, obviously if you're a golf fanatic you need to stop by the Biltmore. So just wanted to share a glimpse. That's the beautiful spa there. And the foliage is like none other. Very close to that area, they have all the beautiful oak trees and such. So this is so special, all of the, the Gothic elements. And it's got so much history with people like Al Capone who've been staying there. People always talk about the potential ghost stories. So I would definitely suggest, if nothing else, stopping by for a stroll or a drink or a snack. Now, something else that's always been close to there that I think you would enjoy is called the Venetian Pool. So I had it pulled up here, but the Venetian Pool is one of the largest pools in, um, in, in Florida as well. And they just finished a renovation last year. And let's see here. Here's the Venetian Pool. And as you see, if you are here looking for fun and sun here in South Florida, you do not want to miss the Venetian Pool, which is also in Coral Gables. It's uh, got a lot of all of that limestone rock and it's got the colorful decorative elements and it has a little bit of the feel of what Vizcaya looks like. 
but fun and sun for the kids and for all of you all. Um, the fourth pick that I had decided on was the Ancient Spanish Monastery, and that's in North Miami Beach, very close to our office, in fact, less than five minutes away, right on West Dixie. Um, and it is a super special property as well. They do all sorts of performances, musical performances, weddings and such. Let me show you some of the other photo gallery pictures so you have an idea. Um, I remember shooting a commercial there and they had monks and all of the saffron orange robes from years ago. But look how incredible this this um, property is. And many different little hidden elements everywhere. Um, I've also been to some weddings or birthdays there. Uh, you can rent out the gardens and the courtyard. It's also a very special property. You can read about the history here. Let's just go through some of this information. Uh, so the construction of this monastery was begun in 1113 AD in Sacramenia near Segovia in Spain. Uh, and then they completed it eight years later. Um, after the canonization of Bernard of Clairvaux, the monastery was renamed. So then a Cistercian monk and mystic, the founder and abbot of the Abbey of Clairvaux, one of the most influential leaders or the church leaders at that time, uh, it was the founder and so anyways after a, re a revolution and many different things in 1925 William Randolph Hearst the famous magnet purchased the cloisters and the monastery buildings and the structures were dismantled stone by stone if you can imagine and transported over to the United States and then they remained in a warehouse in New York um, for 26 years and one year after his death in 1952 they were purchased by two entrepreneurs for use as a tourist attraction and it took 19 months and 20 million dollars even back then to put it together so in 1953 Time magazine called it the biggest jigsaw puzzle in history imagine that uh, and then after in 1964 Colonel um, Pentland, who was a millionaire banker, philanthropist, and benefactor of many Episcopal churches, he purchased the cloisters and then presented them to the Bishop of Florida. So today, the parish is also called the Church of St. Bernard de Clairvaux, and it's an active and growing congregation in the Episcopal Diocese of South Florida. They do actually have services there. And next door they have a tennis court where I had taken lessons when I was a young person. So um, anyways, feel free to take a peek, SpanishMonastery.com. And then lastly, let's just go back to the Coral Castle here. <laughs> Coral Castle Museum, that is my last pick. So prepare to be amazed. Um, as you see, there's many different things etched into uh, the beloved Coral Castle, which was from Ed, that's his greeting. After more than 60 years, you can still see that there. It's an unusual, interesting place. Um, in the 1940s, you would have seen a man uh, weighing 100 pounds standing over it, and he would have asked you for 10 cents to go visit. So there's a, a whole sculpture garden in stone, and the significance of each piece is explained. So his name is Ed Leeds Scan... I'm probably mispronouncing his name, so I apologize. Ed Leeds Scanlalmin. Mm. Oh well, anyways, he actually said that he thought he had supernatural powers and um, somehow he built all of this um, and he supposedly said that the ancient powers that were used to build the pyramids um, also were the secrets that he incorporated to make this whole coral castle. So you can tour it, uh, let's see some of the, the videos or the, uh, let's see, the exploring the pictures here. So anyways, you can see the picture here. So if you'd like to go visit, find it on the map. And there are many interesting little tidbits here in Miami to explore. And Coral Castle would be one of them, unique space. So have a wonderful week, everyone, and take care.